Welcome to a ham radio and networking video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about my ham radio QTH, which is basically just a bunch of handheld radios. So, uh, this video is going to be a little different because it's going to be on Jason Ham Radio 2.0's YouTube channel. And I thought I would just make a video, and I want to thank Jason for uh, asking a whole bunch of uh, little small channels like myself to DM him and uh, get a video out there uh, to have other people know about these other smaller YouTubers uh, like myself and a, lot, a bunch of other people. So without further ado, let's get started. The first radio that I want to talk about is the ICOM ID52 radio. It is my daily carry right now because it has D-Star and because it's just a nice radio and it's my most expensive handheld radio. It's got a nice buttons right here, and it's got a very large color display, as well as a PTT, squelch, and a power button, as well as a micro SD card slot with a USB uh, power in to charge it without using a drop-in charger, and then a microphone and speaker right there. So, the reasons why this is my favorite radio is because it has D-Star, which is now one of my favorite more most digital modes it used to be one of my least favorite digital modes until I used it and found out I actually like the people who talk in this digital mode and it's not just a bunch of droid star users uh, that sound like crap so this is one of my favorite uh, radios for right now my second most favorite radio along with another radio that we'll talk about later is the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus from BridgeComp Systems now, it feels really nice in the hand, and its PTT is very nice as well. It's got nice knobs at the top, and its buttons are very squishy as well. And one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite radios as well is because it feels really nice, like I said earlier, and it has the digital mode DMR, which stands for Digital Mobile Radio. So I can talk to people all over the world, and this was also my first digital radio, and that's... Uh, Without DMR, I probably would not be in a, the best ham radio type of uh, life here. Because this is really what got me started into being active with amateur radio. Let's move it from the super expensive radios and get into some older P25 radios by Motorola. So, this is the Motorola XTS 1500. It is a 800 megahertz. P25 digital radio, which means it does the P25 digital mode, which can also be used on amateur radio as well, if you have a hotspot. So, one of the re uh, reasons why I like this radio is because it just looks nice, and it also uh, is nice and rugged as well. Now, let's talk about uh, this radio. So, I bought this Motorola as well as this Kenwood radio uh, at the Hamvention Hamfest in uh, Dayton, Ohio, so I got two Motorola 800 MHz P25 radios, as well as this Kenwood uh, 800 MHz P25 radio as well, for a total cost of $40. It also includes the battery for the Motorola radios, a mic for the Motorola radios, and a charger for the Motorola radios. So let's get back into the digital main class radios. This is the Yaesu FT3D radio. It is a the older version of the Yaesu FT5D radio and it does the YSF digital mode. One of the reasons why it's one of my favorite radios is because of its really nice color touchscreen display. It is touchscreen which is why I like it a lot. It's got very nice PTT and function buttons as well as a power button right here and has a micro SD card slot has a data slot as well as uh, a microphone speaker jack and uh, a DC plug if you want to power it without the drop charger. It's a very small radio with a small battery pack. Doesn't last the battery doesn't last that long, but it feels nice and it is really really easy to program this on the fly uh, without having to use programming software, which the Anytone uh, it's a little harder to do and the Icom is uh, a little harder but it's still pretty easy. Now here I have the Motorola XPR6550 DMR UHF band radio. So 
So I got this for $100 at the Ham Radio Crash Course Swap. It's a very nice radio. Um, I really like Motorola because it has nice sounds. They're really rugged radios. I mean, just listen to that sound. That sounds awesome. So, let's talk about a couple other Motorola radios as well. Here I have some Motorola GP68s. These are very rare Chinese Motorola radios. Don't know why they invented these, but uh, this one's UHF and this is the VHF model of them. And I will be looking to use a UHF slash VHF cross-band repeater with these for uh, testing purposes as well. And here are my bow fangs. So these are what I call my bow fangs, even though this one's the only bow fang of them all. This one is basically a modified version of the bow fang. I mean, Welcome. the menu's the same, Frequency it's just got mode. a slightly better screen there, uh, and it looks cooler. This is another Chinese 2 meter 70 centimeter FM analog radio right here. Uh, and then this is my Baofeng UV88 HP radio. And these I use for analog, uh, and I also use them for testing purposes as well. So if I want to make some analog repeater or, or analog simplex or testing antennas, these are the radios that I use. Subscribe to Ham Radio Networking uh, if you want to see more videos like these or if you want to see how-to videos, unboxing slash setup videos for amateur radio. And I will be doing live streams hopefully once or twice every single week of me making contacts on digital modes, all-star, uh, as well as HF and possibly even finding some pirate shortwave radio stations and doing stuff like that as well. So. Spread hammer and everything on YouTube. With that, I'm going to say 73, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video of me uh, going over what uh, these radios are, uh, how I got them, and stuff like that. So, this is K0 in the casing 73.